Hi, my name is Joseph Andrew Wilson, and because I play the saxophone, my friends call me Jaws. During the next 30 minutes or so, I'd like to share with you my world. Behind me is where my ministry all started. God has done amazing things in my life through this process of maturity and growth, and I just want to give you a little bit of insight of who I am. Again, who's Joe Wilson? You see here, um, used to be mostly trees. Uh, after the tornado came through, they did a lot of clearing of land. This is where I grew up, um, the creamery. Um, this is actually the cool story about this is that when I was in third grade, I came up here with my school mates, and we went across the street there, and we saw a baby calf being born. Uh, little did I know that um, about six years later, I would move down the street, uh, right around the corner from it. Um, so a lot of memories right here, where we had ice cream a lot through the summers, and uh, right over here, um, it's empty now, but there were goats, and uh, baby goats and, uh, and sheep that were there, and we spent a lot of time, again, um, I spent a lot of time, I should say, seeking God about what I should do with my life and what He wanted from me. I remember many times I would take a uh, bike ride, it's only about two minutes that way, and just really seek God and seek what He wanted for my life, and so this place really is very special to me. It's funny because in the, um, in, the, in the fall, the first fall we moved up here, right across the way there was a pumpkin patch, and it was pretty wild because for like two weeks, I remember I didn't, I was driving my bike and it was just mobs with people. I mean mobs. There must have been probably three or four thousand people sitting there. Um, kids and everything with pumpkins and it was so cool. As a matter of fact, actually, what it was is you had to pick your own pumpkin. And I love pumpkins. I love pumpkin pie and pumpkin seeds. And what I did was I had a hoodie because I, I didn't have anything else to carry. So I had this giant hoodie and I strapped it around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> and I tied it around my neck, and I've got this giant pumpkin on my back as I'm pedaling around to get home. <laughs> I get home, and I'm like, <gasps> oh no, I'm gasping for air. <laughs> it's the silliest thing in the world, but hey, you know, I like pumpkin. You know, and they said, whatever you can carry, you can take. And I was like, I'm going to take the biggest one. So, <laughs> a lot of fun here again. <laughs> It is here that um, this street where I spent, I should say, uh, the better part of my adolescence, um, it's a place I called home. Um, it's Many memories are here. I remember as far as uh, doing a lot of shoveling and a lot of wanting, running, a lot of uh, running and talking. And um, There's a place actually right there over there. Um, some of my friends used to live, we used to play basketball. Um, this street, um, is very near and dear to me. Um, this whole area is, it's something as far as now to come up here and to see what once was is no more. Yeah, basketball. Right there, the hoop is no longer there. That was when I had my first crush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so right here is my, that's the neighborhood. Uh, well, that's one of my neighbors and we are now pulling out where my house used to be. So, where I'm standing, actually, believe it or not, was once the place where my front door was. Um, it's very different for me. Um, I haven't been up here in 
I'd say about a year and a half, two years. So it's different because if you can imagine, there was a big brown raised ranch behind me. And to my left, there was a pad right there that was for our garage. And over there, as far as behind where that big uh, uh, tree is, was once where our pool was. I lived out here uh, about 20 years. And um, when the tornado hit, it was um, kind of surreal. As you can see all the, as far as I mentioned earlier, about 75 trees, as you can see, there's a bunch of stumps all throughout. And um, if you were to go further back, you'd see them all um, sticking out on the ground. Uh, so it's definitely a different place for me now. You know, when you start to, I guess, realize what you once had, and that is no more, but you think to yourself what God has gained and what God has given you in return. And uh, through great tragedy comes great joy. It's funny because down there, uh, we, there's a barn. We had a lot of fun in that barn. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun in the barn. It's amazing how when you take away trees and landmarks, how things just seem so small. You know, um, you know, when something's unrecognizable, um, as it was shortly after a tornado, you know, it was definitely weird because the street, you couldn't find the street, you couldn't see it. Um, again, 75 trees is a lot of trees, and although it doesn't, you know, look like much now, now, it, uh, it was definitely a place that I called home. Uh, and it wasn't just home to me, it was home to nine brothers and sisters. Um, and uh, it's cool. You know, through it all, I, I do thank God for everything that he's given me, you know. Uh, and that's why I guess hope, I look at this plot of land and I see how much hope was as far as given and how much uh, uh, hope was just instilled even though there were rough times you look around and you say wow God really um, he really sustained and provided and uh, again no lives were lost uh, as far as on my end I mean I think there was four people that as far as that, that died in that tornado but uh, truly, as far as the blessing, that uh, my sister and my nephew were not one of those people. When my parents had bought the house, um, it was the winter time. Well, it was, it was, um, sorry, it was, the winter was just ending. It was uh, March. And my baby sister was born, Samara. And, um, it was interesting because when everything melted away, um, as far as here, there was a giant tree here. When everything melted away, right in here, I don't know if you can still see it, but it was actually in stones, there was Jesus. Right here. This is what we call the praying rock. Um, it's kind of cool how it's still here. <laughs> yep. I remember being a kid sitting on here and talking and laughing and joking. And, you know, we used to play on this thing. Mama always told us, don't play on it, because you could fall off and get hurt, but we used to play on it. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of cool memories that are built here that uh, I hope to share one day. Um, it is a vision that I have is to transform this place into a, uh, a retreat for musicians um, to give them hope. Uh, I do hope that I see that come to fruition and hopefully with your help and um, your support we can just do, we can do just that you know it's funny because um, my life my picture it's for me it's always seemed complicated but then more and more as I shoot this video it's like um, when you're a kid and they give you those um, pictures where you basically take the colors that are one through eight and you just take the color and you put the paint 
right where it says to put it. So therefore, you fill in the colors, and it creates this wonderful picture of either an, an abstract animal, or not abstract, but as far as a, a painted picture of a beautiful exotic animal, or something as simple um, and delicate as a butterfly. Um, I'm excited. I really am excited to see how God is just orchestrating all of this. Uh, right now, we're headed to uh, Reverend Morris, a good friend of mine. Uh, done some, we've done some uh, ministry together, and just going to sit down and just fellowship and talk and see uh, where the Spirit leads us. You know, it's interesting um, because. For me, being involved with many different denominations, um, it's been a challenge um, because it's combining the old with the new um, as far as the different types of services, whether they will be liturgical or um, as far as a more contemporary style of you know um, of what we see as far as in in, in some churches today. Um, I really enjoy all aspects because if you're, when you're open I should say, um, you can really see how God is able to connect and move people to a place of hope um, as they seek Him out in spirit and in truth. Um, it's exciting to, again, get involved and, you know, to talk to people of different as far as denominations like I, I really enjoy as far as the Episcopal. Most people say, what? Episcopal? Yeah. Um, I like the liturgical side. Um, I do like as far as um, some as far as Southern Baptist and, um, and even American Baptist. I, I enjoy those as well. Um, Methodist is really cool. and um, they are, um, they are moving more toward a more progressive um, realm, which is, in certain aspects, um, very unique. Um, the United Church of Christ, um, that's a really interesting denomination as well, um, where they're, um, they, they, they move sometimes a little bit of a, on a, what we would consider a more a new age side of things, but at the same point, they are in the realm and truth of that God is everywhere. Um, and it is true because as far as the creation um, that is around us, the trees, they're all God's creation. So therefore, the Spirit of God does, as it says uh, in Genesis, hover above the waters. And He separates it all. Um, and uh, yes, and even as far as the Pentecostal or uh, that realm, um, I learned something new that the Church of God in Christ and the Assembly of God actually, the Assembly of God actually, um, I believe it was the the Church of God in Christ actually um, was a part of, um, from, from that actually sprung the Assembly of God. Uh, it's very interesting as far as to find the histories about the Church um, and what it, as far as where it came from. So. Yeah, it's a little bit of a history lesson. I'll probably have to give you a little bit more later on, but I'll see you guys soon. It really... It, if we could just come to the place where we understand each other and, again, not compromise, but understand and realize that love and not acceptance but love, because they're two completely different things, um, we, could, we could become a, a, a much more united as far as church. Not world, but church. Um, the world has their system, the church has theirs. Um, in turn, it should be the kingdom mindset that Christ is pointing out. As he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Um, it really, in my efforts as far as to connect with people, I really strive to, again, understand where they're coming from and be open to change. But the only way as far as you can change a person, I believe, is you challenge them, but you don't, you don't beat them over the head with the challenge. You make them think, open their mind to seeing things in a different realm. We all have 
a different ideas. I think the coolest thing about when you read the Gospels, it stumped me for a long time because I was always kind of like, this doesn't make any sense. But until someone, as far as explained to me, that the Gospels are written from four different perspectives. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, it's like we're, you know, we're all standing in a room and we're all looking at a picture. For instance, that billboard right there that says, care for your loved ones, care for yourself. Now, the first thing I saw was the lettering. Someone else may have seen a little tiny thing as far as the AARP sign in the, in the corner, the right-hand corner. And then someone else could have automatically noticed the mother and daughter hugging. They're all still part of the same picture. We have to just open our minds to understand that sometimes we all don't see the whole picture at the same time. And when we do see the whole picture at the same time, we all don't see the same thing. Doesn't mean that the picture is wrong, it is just means that we have to take time and walk with each other and explain to each other as far as what we all see, because we all do and we all are striving to see the same thing, and that is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm here with Reverend Morris, um, a good friend of mine. Uh, I met him. Oh, goodness gracious, I'd say about three or four years ago now, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I was playing at Nadim's in uh, East Long Meadow, and uh, he had approached me about uh, just getting together and talking, uh, just music um, and just connectivity, because I told him as far as I play at churches, and he was like, oh, really? I said, yeah. So I called him, and uh, we met, and it has really been an amazing uh, journey of building a relationship um, um, and having, as far as found a brother in Christ to share uh, the vision that God has given me and to be able to be a servant um, here at the church. Um, and I just want to just have him just share a little bit about uh, our relationship. You're a brother in Christ, and you're a good man, Joe and a servant of the Most High God. You are a giving soul. And if it were not for you, my daughter wouldn't be pursuing uh, the path of uh, music that she's on. She's doing very well at Westfield State, by the way, which... Um, we thank God for your being available and just being willing. You probably recall that we were talking on the phone, and I said, well, why don't you come have dinner? Yes, and, yes. And, and, yes. and meet my daughter, yes. and, and you did that. Yeah. You came, and you had dinner with us, and you had to play that night. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you had to play that night uh, over in Agawam, but you took the time to uh, listen to me and to, to share with my family. Appreciate that. Also, we've done, in the few years that we've been together, some really good projects. The Jazz for Jesus projects, uh, special events, uh, the youth graduation services, and, and all of those kinds of things. Uh, and what you've brought is a sense of gospel presence where uh, it is more than just uh, plain music. It's really about glorifying God. Um, and that's one of the things, Joe, that I really appreciate about you is that it's not about the money. Uh, you know, it's not about making yourself look good. Uh, it's really about glorifying God. And that's one of the reasons that I like uh, ministering with you. And also, it's a reason why I think that... Uh, 
we can continue to grow and uh, see what God has uh, in the present and also in the future. Yeah, it's um, it is so cool as far as that, how the spirit works. You know, where uh, <clears throat> it starts out as a simple thing as far as to say uh, dinner. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's kind of funny. It's kind of that's the Jesus model. You know, that's oh, right. just come on over and have dinner. Sure. <laughs> 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 and then one thing leads to another, and before you know it. Um, yeah, like you said, Nia's off at West Hill State doing fantastic. I love working with her. Um, I can't wait to uh, get her as far as uh, continue to have her in the studio and finish her project. I mean, she just has a wonderful, wonderful uh, talent as far as writing and um, being able to uh, see things Excuse me, in a realm that I've never seen. And that's really kind of where, you know, on our way over here, I was sharing with Tony. I said, do you know... It's about understanding and seeing things in a different realm. Sometimes we get ourselves like that's all we see. And with Nia, she really is a breath of fresh air to me because I ask her, "So what are you thinking?" And she'll say, "Oh no, I'm not. I don't want to say. I don't want to say." And then all of a sudden, I'm like, "Well, just tell me." And what you know, the Holy Spirit puts in her to share with me, it takes my thought process to a whole nother level where. I'm like, wow, I never saw it like that. Um, and it, it causes me to grow more and more um, to understand again that it is not about me. Um, it's about the kingdom and us moving to a place of maturity and unity um, in the faith that those who come into the church see who God is through us. And those who stand outside of the church are led to... Uh, see who God is in, God is in us excuse me, as far as to um, see transformation and excuse me, as I say to see hope mm -hmm. um, that 's one of the biggest things that I really strive to um, display in anything I do is that we have hope um, and it 's one of the things I actually put on the website is you have hope because you have influence and you have influence because you have hope. And uh, I think it's been awesome because the times that I'm here, it truly is that, you know, God, the Spirit just really leads uh, you. And I'm really um, blessed to be able to be a part of the ministry here um, as often as God leads. He, it's so cool because sometimes it's a sporadic you know, sometimes it's planned, and it's great when it's planned, and it's so cool how God, when it is planned, is just absolutely, like, amazing. I wanted to just, you know, uh, I guess end with uh, saying thank you uh, for sharing as far as your heart and your, um, allowing me to be a part of what God is doing here at Greater New Life, and uh, I look forward to continuing to do more ministry with you. Well, uh, Joe, we, uh, <clears throat> uh, we will do that. We will do that. And we will look for ways to borrow one of the phrases of yours. We will look for ways to expand God's kingdom and to be uh, a beacon of, of light uh, in the community that we're in. I want to say, and I have to say, regarding my daughter, uh, she, uh, God really has given her some, uh, some unique gifts and talents. One of which, uh, and I'm sure this comes through in the things that she's writing, though of course I haven't seen them and she won't show me <laughs> so, <laughs> until they're ready. So... That's, you know, that's fine. That's just art. But uh, she has such a sensitivity and love for people. And as she grows, uh, more and more of that is being, you know, she's finding her voice. Hmm. Uh, also, she has a... Um, a real commitment to excellence. 
Uh, and we expect, uh, you know, we expect her to do things in a most excellent way. And, uh, you know, I look forward to, to your continuing to work with her and to hear uh, when the Lord says so, to hear what you all have collaborated on. Well, thank you, brother. You're welcome. Yeah.